now in orbit above Edgewater, Captain. I'd wager this is the outpost. Rebecca! Anders! Come on out! There we go! Good score!
Huh. Rebecca taught me this once. You can jerry-rig these old locks so as they don't open anymore. But we've only ever done that if we're in a real bind. Here, I'll fix it. Hey, take a gander. The door... Oh, no. Oh, no. What did you do? Oh, Mioka. I'm so sorry. I don't... they were... That bitch! They were all set to abandon us! What would Clara say, huh? Every day she'd ask if we heard from you. And she'd have forgiven you! The kid had a soul that made the sulfur smell like roses! Ugh. I'd have leave your medallions to rot with you, but... Clara would want to be buried with her sister. At least... at least I know. Ought to have learned by now that getting one's hopes up tends to open them to being dashed across the stars. I hate to say this, but... Clara died thinking her sister was still fighting to get back home. I think... I'm glad. If she were still alive now, it'd break her to know the truth. Yeah, maybe. I'm used to disappointment. She was still so naive as to let it hurt her every time it happened. Only thing left is to take these medallions home, which means figuring out how to bait the Mana Queen out of our old base. The most pissed off I've ever seen a queen was when a foreign species was on her soil. I'd wager the stench of a primal might do the trick. Not unless you happen to be familiar with the ins and outs of Mana Queen behavioral patterns. Never had the pleasure of hunting primals, but I hear they're all over Scylla. Let's tear a few apart, shall we? I'm sure they've got pheromones. Everything does. Captain, if you're looking for crew members Ellie or Felix, they're sharing a drink upstairs. So then I says, fine, I'll pay you back for all of it, with interest. Nice one. You must have had them quaking in their heels. I mean, I wasn't really gonna do it. I just wanted to make them feel bad. Pay you back with interest.
Destination reached. Scylla. Hey, you got a minute? Hey boss, got a hypothetical for you? You got a friend, see? Somebody you knew when you were growing. Five years go by, they send you a message out of the Aether. Guy by the name of Clyde Harlow. He was an old friend of mine. Honestly, he was pro- I just heard from him. Says he wants to talk to me. Says it's urgent. The guy just vanished without a trace one day. No goodbyes, no- Clyde was my first friend, but he was also my mentor. Taught me how to think. I figured the board got him in the end. Some guys with black uniforms. Figured I should let you know, seeing as we're on Scylla and all. Clyde's got a base on the other side of this rock. I appreciate this, boss. I know you're going out of your way for me. Every SAM unit come.
Customer, all germs and contaminants have been neutralized. Good, you're back. Not that I missed you. I assure you, I am not... ...capable of such emotional capacity. Hey, Cap. Outstanding. These ought to be enough. Let's get back to Monarch. There's an old base I used to call home. I can get us in the door, but we'll have to shoot our way through the Queen's Brood to get to the center. Password to the door? Hayes's idea. Clara, Hayes. Rest of us just thought it sounded cool.
We'll be here, Captain. Or will we? Haha. <laughs> Hey, you. Looking for something? Where do you think you're going? Hey, nice form. Good delivery, too. You looking to join Captain Harlow's crew, huh? All right, go on through. Got my sights on you. Well, hey there, Hullhead. Clawed your way out of the Groundbreaker at long last? Uh-huh. Oh, sorry, were you expecting me to say something? Maybe a long time no see, or a you've aged, old man? So, you took Felix under your wing. Kept him busy. Good. Kid always needed a place to belong. He kicks things what need kicking, and we look the other way when he starts talking anti-corporate. It's a good arrangement. Hear that, Clyde? I've been making something out of myself. So long as you haven't been making a fool of yourself. I'm sure Felix has no end of stories to tell of your exploits together. I look forward to catching up with the boy. I'm working on something. Something big. Something the likes of which Halcyon has never seen. And I want Felix to be a part of my initiative. I'm fulfilling a promise I made to the boy. That one day, he and I would change the colony together. That day has finally arrived. Easy there, Clyde. No one said nothing about throwing in with you. In case you didn't notice, I'm pretty happy where I am. I'm not asking you to walk away from your captain, Felix. But neither should you allow yourself to be controlled by fear. Change is not to be feared. I brought you here because I want to know where Felix's loyalties lie. When the day of our revolution comes, I want to know that I can rely on him. Everyone in my crew proves their loyalty. No exceptions. Not even Felix. I want you to deal with a traitor for me. Name's Trask. Kill him, and bring me proof of his death. His ring should do nicely. 
ratted us out to the board. He's been an informant, has been for years. When he realized I was onto him, he and his little cadre mutinied. Killed five of my own in tuck tail. I don't know where he's hiding, but his wife might, Rosanna. Lives on the groundbreaker last I checked. Rosanna knows my crew by name and face, but you're a stranger to her. She'll talk to you. You think so? Maybe we should have a word with Trask. Get his side of the story first. You'd be wasting your breath bandying words with that traitor. But if it makes you feel better, by all means. Remember, I want proof. Bring me his ring. I don't care if the hand's still attached. Here, my token. Think of this as my personal signature. Anyone who knows me by my works will know me by this token. Well enough. It's been a few years, but I still remember a thing or two. You had a chip on your shoulder. You'd argue over anything and you'd never back down. What do you mean, had? And for the record, you never could admit when you lost an argument. You see what I had to deal with? Let's hear it. I was working on this plan for years saving every bit I could. I never intended to spend my life laboring on the Groundbreaker. When the opportunity pres- You might have said something. I had some ugly business in Scylla. If I told you- A revolution is the work of a lifetime, Captain. I've spent my life- Everything you see around you is the result of that preparation. A base of operations, loyal soldiers, Hardly. The board is rotting from the inside. Tomorrow, next year, a generation from now, eventually, the board will fall to pieces. Entropy is the natural state of the universe, Captain. All systems inevitably dissolve. When that day comes to Halcyon, we will be ready. The skies around Scylla are curiously absent of patrol ships. Besides, our facility is well... Not all revolutions involve bloodshed and fire, Captain. The one day, when the board is weak and Halcyon vulnerable, we... Something... Crew members Ellie and Max are engaged in a heated discussion in the kitchen.
We're now in orbit. Above Fallbrook. We're in orbit over Cascadia, Captain. Sam, uh, I've got a question. Do you use alcohol as a cleaning agent? I've heard some folk do that. Alcohol-based cleaners can compare to Samson Ray Acid Spray Premium Nozzle Attachment. Installation available for as low as nine payments of 99.99 bits. Is that a yes or a no? I can never tell with you. Warning, liquid is caustic. Keep out of reach from elderly customers and lab sprats. <laughs> Whoa! Watch who you're calling an elderly lab sprat, you bucket of bolts. That thing crashed a long time ago. It ain't gonna fly again, so don't go getting funny ideas. Here we go.
Well, this is the spot. You know, I thought I'd be angry. I thought I'd storm in here in a rage and exterminate all these bugs and everything would be all right in the end. But I ain't. I'm mostly just empty. A little sad, maybe. The first night Hayes and I spent in here, we knew it was home. It's safe. It's got a nice chill to it. But mostly, it doesn't stink of sulfur. Monarch folks often joke about it. Not because of the smell or the grittiness it leaves in your throat. Not because of the headaches or the coughing. It's because there's no escaping it. It's life here, and there ain't anything you can do about it. But here, somehow the sulfur never made it. The nights we spent in here felt like vacations. So we started building. We hauled in steel, hired sublight folk to help. That's how we met Anders and Opal. They stuck around after our contract was up. Opal liked camping. Anders liked chasing her tail. Four of us for a while, scraping together what bits we could to build our home. Then came Rebecca, a sawbones out of the Cascadia survivors, who took a kindness to Hayes. And Clara, her little sister. I'll admit I wasn't keen on taking her on at first, but for a teenager, Believe me, I had my complaints. She had a head for numbers, helped us trade hides for Clara, Hayes, Ander. Me too, Captain. But I'm starting to think that maybe I found another. Now let's get to shooting before I get all sentimental. Caution! We did it. We fucking did it! I'd hug you if I weren't covered in guts. Come on, let's find those medallions. I wish these were more auspicious circumstances, but at least we're all here. This bringing them together, burying them. This is the kind of thing Hayes would have done. 
That makes it stupid. By all accounts, we should have left well enough alone, but that also makes it right. Captain, thank you. You mind if we rest a spell before we head out? I'd, I'd like to bury Opal and Clara proper before I lay everyone's medallions to rest. What? Why? Them's painful memories, Captain. Huh. That's... That ain't a bad point. All right, Captain. Thanks. You know, I'd been assuming this entire stay-on-your-ship thing isn't a permanent arrangement. Part of my contract? That said, you ain't been eaten or shot to death yet. Says a lot about the stability of your future. And to be honest, I'm about sick of sleeping on bar stools. So how's about this? You keep letting me stay on that ship... Outstanding. 